So then let's just quickly go a little bit further. Misfit on precipitated shape. Okay. Precipitate in general. So far we have omitted the three dimensional or volume strain energy. But in reality, quite often you would find the hole left by the precipitate versus the precipitate itself volume. They may not fit each other. The precipitate quite often is a little bit larger than the hole. So in those cases, you cannot omit the volume of three dimensional strain energy. And in those cases, we don't have uh, we don't go into detail, but the total inter total energy for the system would be the interfacial area term plus the 3D volume strain energy term. Delta G S as for strain energy, but it's due to the volume or three dimensional effect. The hole is smaller than the precipitate. Which means when you put the precipitate in there, it's going to push thoroughly everything around, other than the mismatch in 2D in plane. Okay? And for those cases, if we have so-called a coherent precipitate, which means they they try to match at an interface, the bond try to match bond by bond, then we are going to have so-called a conservation of lattice site and something like this. The precipitate it would be the volume wise it's either larger or smaller than the hole if you put that thing away okay but they still try to match the bond will be tilted they would try to squeeze or or, or pull okay the shape of such a precipitate would depend on several things one is what the material for our host whether the host is soft or hard. If the host is very soft, your precipitate can push, and then the host easily give away, right? Then whatever the precipitate wants to take, then it would accommodate the precipitate shape. It also depends on precipitate nature, whether the precipitate is hard or soft, whether the host is uniform or isotropic versus unisotropic. And what about the misfit? Okay, it is just to put it another way, many things determine it together, the shape of the precipitate. If we are dealing with a so called isotropic matrix, which means uh, quite often for cubic, along different directions, they look pretty much the same, and the same elastic modulus and coherent uh, volume strain. If those case, the volume string term, the three dimensional term would be just uh, the this term, a uh, constant times misfit times the total volume for the precipitate, which means the larger the volume for the precipitate, the larger the total string energy, volume string energy, okay? And uh, that's for coherent. If I'm dealing with incoherent precipitate, different uh, lattice structure or very different lattice parameter. It's not trying to match. But I still have volume mismatch. Then the sides, the lattice side at the interface, they don't have to match, but no coherent. Because they don't match, there's no two-dimensional or interfacial matching between the precipitate and the host. Okay, And the volume term due to whether it's larger or smaller, they still exist. And due to the mis volume misfit of data, it still exists. The data is just uh, how much uh, volume for the precipitate, whether it's bigger or smaller than the host material, okay? In this case, we'll just quickly go through a little bit. Um, if we are talking about isotropic matrix, the host material does not depend when you look from different directions, they look pretty much the same. Okay. The string energy due to this volume misfit for for this uh, one would be given by here. We don't go into the detail for these. Just you know the string energy is proportional to the misfit square, but also proportional to the V for what? Volume, V for volume. And also it's a factor of the shape of the precipitate, a, a factor.
and shape factor and quite often that i factor goes like this depend on c to a ratio that's the if we're talking about a precipitate one dimension if we call it a c the vertical versus the radius dimension okay if it's one to one that's like sphere okay if it's close to zero that is like a very thin plate the other direction is getting closer to a needle or a whisker okay so this f factor takes different value but generally if it's a disc quite often it gives you the slow smallest what f factor smallest which means quite often it takes the shape of the disc that gives you the smallest uh, so-called volume of three-dimensional strain energy that's why in many cases the so-called incoherent uh, um, precipitate quite often they take the shape of a squeezed uh, sphere how squeezed uh, depending on the, that value okay and uh, one last thing that I talk a little bit is for a precipitate as it grows from small to larger from small to larger quite often people find is in the very beginning it's coherent but uh, as it grows it gradually loses coherency so for a coherent precipitate the coherent energy would be area term chemical bonding term plus the string energy term and the string energy term is proportional to the volume okay that's for a coherent uh, precipitate if it becomes so-called uh, semi-coherent or, or it or incoherent it will be still the chemical term a times the the individual area plus the structural term but the structural term would be proportional both of these terms be proportional to what pi r square we are talking about uh, a a sphere we're talking about a sphere that uh, sphere the four pi r square gives you the total interfacial area okay and if we are going to mathematically plot this if we're going to mathematically plot this for both of these when the radius goes to zero the become what for both of these when the radius goes to zero they become zero right they start from zero commonplace but initially initially quite often the square term is larger but at a certain moment the cube term would what would dominate because it increased faster so they would always cross at a certain point that's so-called a critical radius and when the size of the precipitate is smaller than this critical the coherent one gives you what lower energy which means quite often in the beginning of the precipitate stage it always takes the shape of a so-called pre coherent precipitate which means it tries to match with the host in the bond sense and then when it become too large then it will go to semi-coherent or completely incoherent because the volume term would dominate okay and it would take the lower one okay the critical size if we equate these two we would get a so-called critical radius we will get an estimate of the critical radius and uh, for smaller data smaller data means what smaller misfit okay the structural term is proportional the structure which means the the interfacial due to the two-dimensional structure is proportional to misfit and uh, the critical radius would be proportional to the inverse of misfit what does that mean is the larger the misfit the smaller that transition will be the smaller the misfit means what the larger the transition and the perfect uh, fitting case would be what the data goes to zero which means okay the precipitate and the host 
they can have perfect match and grow very very large. Make sense? That's just what it means. The misfit and uh, the and uh, the critical transition radius. When it's smaller than this critical transition radius, the precipitate remains coherent, which means it tries to match at the interface bound by bound. On the other hand, when it's larger than this, it becomes too much to match bound by bound. Then it will become some called semi-coherent. Okay. 